Lord, for this in the moment. Thank you for your faithfulness to us and for your word that covers us. Yes, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that you gave us last week. And all that you promised that has yet to manifest itself. Yes, Lord. Thank you. I thank you that you kept us from the destroyer. You didn't allow the canker worm and the locust and the palmer worm to destroy what you've given us. Thank you for our health. Thank you for the strength that you've given us. Father, I thank you that even though we are waiting to see more of what you promised, you've already done enough. So we've gathered again to praise you. We've gathered to glorify your name. Yes, sir. Because you alone are worthy of our praises. And we won't fail to magnify your name and to glorify your name. So help us, I pray. And we'll forever give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good to be back. Florida again traveling is great but there's no place like home Amen. I gotta run a little bit more this week this, this month but um, I thank God for the strength and the days Amen. so we'll be I'll be in and out schedule in a few weeks. Amen. 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 Somebody say, I need a vacation. I need a vacation. Yeah, I do. I do. And I thank God for it. All right. No, that's not what I wanted. We'll go there. All right.
Christian Assembly Dunnell and is to inspire all believers to have a greater passion for God, a greater faith in the promises, the greater understanding of his word, and a greater purpose in worship. And the vision of Greater Dimensions Christian Assembly is that all believers will live in a greater faith, trusting in the greater promises, and become mature in the greater purpose of God. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Great Dimensions. Good morning. That's June 10th. Is it April? Um, I don't want to rush it, but I seem to be getting ahead of myself. But thank God for another week. Bible study this Tuesday at 
7.30. I don't want us to get out of the habit completely. The Bible says so don't get comfortable. Keep that on your calendar. All right, I got a note here. Let me read. Okay, on the 23rd, Saturday, the 23rd, <coughs> there'll be a program in memory of Dr. Rene Lee Thomas behalf of his family, so they wanted to come and be a part of the service Amen. at the Outreach uh, outreach Church of Christ Given in Heaven mm -hmm. on Lemons. Does not say what time, so we have to find out what time it is going to be, and we want to be there to uh, support mm -hmm. his family Amen. in his memory. Yes. If I could, I'd say I'd walk around heaven, but there's no way in the world I'll ever get that high. <laughs> that can't be. But um, we want to be a blessing to them and encouragement to them. Um, I thank God for a week of rest and relaxation. I um, was visiting with my aunt. She called me <laughs> last, she called me yesterday, and she said, I got up to make breakfast. And went to look in the room and you weren't there. I said, no, I'm in Florida now. And, um, but I enjoyed myself immensely and I tried to do as much of nothing as I possibly could. And, um, but you know, sometimes even doing nothing is not good. Being in bed is not as comfortable. You miss your bed sometimes. <laughs> so uh, I did get some rest. And um, I think I used up all that rest yesterday I was going from <coughs> once I got back into Florida, I had an appointment to um, had a workshop yesterday. So from about six thirty in the morning to almost twelve last night, I was just going, going, going. So I used up all my rest, but I'll get some more today. <laughs> um, I'm supposed to be at a service at four in Pearson. But don't look like I is gonna make it. Uh -oh. I'm just not sure that I will. Mm. Uh, let me talk to you from the book of St. Mark this morning. And I want to read from verses. Let's read verse 22, 23. Mark chapter 5. All right. Mark chapter 5, verse 22, 23, verse 35. Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the Arabian synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. In verse 35, while he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house Certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. Father, bless these lips of clay that they might speak as the oracles of God. Thank you for a rainbow word. A word that will sink deep down into our ears and our spirits 
a seed that is planted that will bring forth the great harvest. It will not be snatched away by the enemy, burned up by the heat and the trials of life. But it will bring forth harvest because it will have deep roots. Father, we thank you now that every promise you've made, you will manifest it. Amen. We wait patiently and we rest in hope, knowing that you will perform that which you have spoken. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to talk to you for just a few minutes from this thought. Don't talk God out of blessing you. Amen. Amen. Don't talk him out of blessing you. Well, it sounds kind of... Don't try to stop him from blessing you. Amen. So when he said that, Pastor, let us look at the text. Mm -hmm. Jesus was approached by a man who asked him to heal his daughter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus willingly said yes. Mm -hmm. Not only was he willing to heal her, but he was willing to go with him. Mm -hmm. And the thing that we forget, I suppose, or we don't want to believe, is that God is willing, the Father is willing to hear us. Yes. We approach God. We approach the Father. We approach prayer with an attitude that God may not hear me. He may not listen to me. So we got to stop with the trying to figure God out or think that God thinks like us. Can I talk for just a minute? Amen. Yeah. So Jesus says, I will come and she will be healed. Amen. And while he was on his way, let me back up just a little bit. Uh, this man was a ruler of the synagogue. He was a part of the crew that was not quite certain or did not accept Jesus as the Messiah. Okay. But being, uh, as it shows, a man of faith, he broke with the prevailing thought that this is not the Messiah. Because whenever Jesus went to the synagogue or as he was just walking through daily life the rulers the Bible says or the Pharisees and the Sadducees were always trying to find ways to trip him up always trying to find ways to place blame on him mm -hmm. and one thing you ought to learn from Jesus example is you don't have to quarrel with anybody or you don't have to respond to stuff that's not true Amen. Mm -hmm. that's true. and too many times we waste our energy trying to put out fires that'll burn themselves out. Mm -hmm. I learned a valuable lesson. Sometimes when people are talking about you, if you don't repeat it, they'll soon stop talking. Amen. Because they want an audience, they need an audience, but if you don't respond, they'll stop talking. And our egos are so fragile, somebody said, uh, don't wear your feelings. If you wear your feelings like eggshells, don't be surprised when they get cracked. Mm -hmm. And so there are some people, especially young kids who are Im immature, and I say that meaning to say that they just haven't had enough life experience. They're always concerned about what people are saying. Mm -hmm. They better keep my name out of their mouth. What does that mean? It means absolutely nothing. nothing. But they get upset because somebody says their name, and most of the times it happens like this. Well, somebody said, and they get upset. I told somebody the other day, they were trying to explain something to me, and I said, listen, okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, let's move on. Because you're upset about what you heard somebody say. I said, if you're not going to the source, then you're wasting my time. Amen. So you can be mad all by yourself, because I'm not gonna get mad with you right. over what somebody said, somebody said. Right. We ain't doing that. Amen. But now, the ruler of the synagogue says to Jesus, heal my daughter. He says, I will. He's on his way. He's detained because somebody else had faith. And this woman comes up behind Jesus. She touches the hem of his garment. I'm saying this to you to help you understand that your problem is not the only problem that God is working on. Amen. And he can deal with your problem and somebody else's problem at the same time. 
So even though it looks like somebody else is ahead of you and somebody's getting blessed before you, doesn't mean that he's not working on your situation. Does not mean he's not heard your prayer. But you got to hold on and you got to wait in faith knowing that if he said he's going to do it, then he's going to do that. Amen. And the thing that trips us up, and I've said it before, is time, that process. From the moment we ask it, the moment we trust God, the moment we believe God, we want some immediate results. And there will be some immediate results, and then there'll be some times that we've got to learn to go through the process. Amen. Because while you're going through the process, you'll learn something. While you're going through the process, you'll see something about God that you did not see before. Amen. And oftentimes, you'll see some things about yourself yeah. that you didn't know were there. Yeah. But if you ask him, believe him when you ask him, and wait for him to manifest it. Mm. <clears throat> so this woman touches him, and let me pause right there. She had an issue of blood. She said, she spoke the word, if I touch his garment. Just to him, I'll be made whole. Amen. When you go to God, go to God with an agenda. Mm -hmm. Don't go rambling. Amen. Don't go hitting this and that and the other and say, oh yeah, why, why, since I'm here, Lord. No, have an agenda. Speak that thing even before you start to pray. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm going to believe God that he's going to do such and so and so and so. Father, I thank you right now because your word says. Amen. Yeah. And you've already spoken the thing because he's given us the authority and the power to speak good into our lives. Yeah, amen. Most times we'll take that authority and speak evil into our lives. Mm -hmm. When you say things like, I ain't gonna never. Mm -hmm. When you say things like, if, well, everybody else but me. Whenever you say negative, you are using your anointing in the wrong way. Amen. Thank you. But speak some positive things over your life. Yeah. Speak life into your life. Speak health into your life. Yeah, exactly. Speak prosperity in your life. Say to yourself, this is a time to rejoice because my life will not be this way always. Amen. Say to yourself that God has something greater for me. Amen. Say to yourself that God is going to do what he said because God cannot lie. If you speak faith, you will see the results. And this woman spoke it and she followed through with it. And Jesus said, when you touch my hem, you got hold. No. No, no, no. He said, daughter, thy faith made you whole. That's right. It wasn't the hem of his garment, it was her faith. Amen. Thank her faith said, if I touch. Come on. And you got to realize that, that you Jesus is in this place right now. Yes, he is. And you must say to yourself, if I touch him, yes. then I'm going to be made whole. Amen. So when you come in, you come in with a posture, with an attitude yes. that today I'm going to worship so as that I will touch him and my problem will be solved. My my issue, my issue will be dried up. My circumstance will be dealt with because I'm going to worship him. Right. When you worship God, he begins to deal with the things that you have petitioned before him. Yeah. And you say, well, I didn't ask him for anything, but it's in your spirit. It's in your heart. Yeah. Because before you have need of it, your heavenly father already knows it. And if you worship him, I promise you, the more you worship, you'll find that God is actively working in your life. He's not working when you're griping and complaining. He's not working when you're cussing and fussing. He's not working when you're walking around tearing down everything that he's built up in your life. But he's working when you worship. I tell you all the time, if you want to stop an argument in your house, throw your hands up and begin to worship God. Your spouse may look at you crazy. Your children may call you all kind of names. But the more you worship, the less they got to fuss and argue about. When you worship, God steps into your situation. If you lose your job, start to worship. If your car breaks down, start to worship. If you get a bad report from a doctor, start to worship. Because you have to know that God is your father and you belong to him. And he has promised good to all of them who will seek him. But you ain't seeking him if you're fussing and complaining. Yeah. That's true. But you got to worship him yeah. so that you are in his presence and he comes into yours. I'll be finishing just a minute. Yeah. So while Jesus was saying to this woman, your faith has made you whole, somebody came and said, listen, your daughter is dead. Don't worry the master anymore. 
And when you begin to speak faith, sometimes when you tell other people your vision, tell other people your dream, on, tell other people what you are believing God for, they shoot you down. Yes. They don't believe anything good can happen in your life. I had a thought the other day. Why is it that we come to church, we join the church, we're a part of a church, we're a part of a ministry, and we only think bad things about people in our ministry? Either we're thinking bad things or we're waiting for some good, bad news to come along. Hmm? I just need it. I, 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 I like sister so-and-so, but just something in my spirit. And so when somebody comes along and they start to say negative things, oh, yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I was watching her. I've been watching him. And I'm going to say this again, and I probably should not because I'm tooting my own horn. I don't care what people say about me. What worries me is that you stand there and let them talk about me. Yeah. When they call my name, say, hold up right there. Either we go three way or we go no way. Because I'm not going to let you talk about any of my members Amen. to my face. Talk about your members. Right. Talk about your friends. Talk about your mama. But you're not going to talk about mine to me. Amen. So a friend is not going to repeat anything because they haven't heard it. Amen. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. But we are always looking for something negative. And as long as you're looking for negative, guess what? You're going to find right. negative every time. That's right. So when people, when you're worshiping, when you're worshiping, your hands are thrown up. Somebody over there with their hands folded, face all frowned up. Yeah, but she was at the club. Yeah, but she go with a so-and-so husband. Yeah, but she's still smoking weed. Yeah, but he's doing that. Yeah. Because every time you lift your hands to worship, somebody is judging your life and they're yeah. judging your worship. Yeah. Yeah. Honor, I'm not everything yeah. that I ought to be. And one that. thing I found out, I prayed, I said, Lord, I don't want to be human. I don't want to cry like everybody cries. I don't want to feel what people feel. But unfortunately, I am human. If you yes. cut me, I will bleed. Yes. Yes. Thank you. So because I'm human, I will do some human things. Y'all ain't happy with that now. Yeah. I don't, uh, because I'm human, I may say some human things. Yeah. One reason I want to get out of education is they cuss way too much. Yeah. Kids today have yes. such foul mouths. Yes. And most of them don't talk like that around their parents, but they're very comfortable talking like that around me. And I say, I don't understand that. They just use all kind of language in front of their teachers, in front of their peers, and I'm sick of that stuff getting in my ears and getting Amen. in my spirit because it makes me want to cuss too. Amen. <laughs> Some of them will respect me, but there are others who don't, they don't care who listens. They don't get the principal walk by. Yeah. They say what they want to say. Amen. That's the world we live in. I say, I need another world. I don't want this one. Amen. And so while you're praising God, people are judging you based on what they heard, what they think they've seen, yeah. what they think they know, or those people who participated with you. Hello. Yeah. 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 Somebody was talking to me and saying, oh, so I said, I do, I do not want to hear anymore. Mm -hmm. No, no, but you got to hear this. No, I don't have to hear this. I don't want to hear it. Amen. Because, let me tell you something. People are not going to always tell the truth. They won't. Thank you. And what I don't want is somebody to say something to me concerning anybody I got to worship with. Mm -hmm. Because it distracts me now. Yeah. So what I want to do is that when I walk in to worship, I want to join hands with you. I want to lock arms with you. And we magnify his name together. together. Amen. And I realize that whatever I've done, he's going to forgive it because of his mercy and his grace. Amen. And whatever you've done, he's going to forgive it based on his mercy and his grace. Amen. Matter of fact, I know it because I already prayed for you that Father, Amen. he'll cover them now yes. with mercy and yes. with grace. Thank so you. when I come into worship, I'm not worried about what you did. Yes. Right. I'm rejoicing in God because he's heard my prayer. Hallelujah. And because you got here, that means that whatever thing you thought was going to kill you didn't kill you. Amen. And God gave you another opportunity. So I'm glad when I see you, even if I know you've done something wrong, that means that the forgiveness is an operation. Yes. And if God has forgiven you, I know my chances are, once you please. I'm not worried about where you've been or what you've done. 
I'm rejoicing in the fact that God has allowed all of us to come together and to lift up our hands and to say thank you that I'm not outdoors and thank you that I'm not hungry. Thank you that I'm not homeless. Thank you that I still got use and activity in my limbs. Thank you I can still blink my eyes. Thank you I can still dress myself. And it's worthy of praise. He's worthy of praise because he's blessing not only me, but I'm looking at you. I know he's blessing you. I'm looking at you. I know that you are a walking miracle because there are several of you in here right now. You should have been dead and gone and buried and forgotten. But God stopped by your house and he said mercy is going to stand at the door. So when death came to take you, mercy said not yet. There are some prophecies over your life that have not been fulfilled so God told death not yet. There are some things that God wants to do for you so he's Told your situation, not yet. This ain't gonna kill him. This is not gonna take her out because I still got some work to do in their life. So I come in with the praise that lets the devil know you didn't even have me, but I thank God I still got away. You thought you were gonna trip me up last time, but I thank God I'm still here. And since I'm here, I might as well praise him. I gotta finish this. Let me let me get back to my text. I gotta gotta finish it. Jesus heard them talking. He heard him talking. And so here's the word of encouragement. I, and, and, and what I'm saying is, listen, do not talk God out of blessing you when he has said, I'm going to bless you. Yes. Jesus said, I'm going to heal your daughter. I'm coming to your house. And then somebody steps up and says, she's dead. Don't worry, Jesus, anymore. And so we come to God and we bring God all of these situations, all of these scenarios. We bring God all of our luggage. We got that little red wagon. We, we're dragging it behind us. And when we get ready to pray, we push it. We give it a kick into the presence of God. Well, Lord, I need a blessing. Yes, Lord, I need a healing. Yes, Lord, I need deliverance. But I'm this and I'm that. And I did this, and I went there, and I fell again, and I'm weak in this area. And we keep telling God why he should not bless us. Yeah. But you must understand that you are living, oh, y'all going to be mad with me when I say this. You're living under a Sodom and Gomorrah anointing. My Lord Jesus. Richard, you done lost your mind. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Because of their immorality, because of their same-sex relationships, because of this, that, and the other. That's not why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because he could not find 50, 40, 30, 10, 20, nor 10 righteous. When he looked for the righteous, he would not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Well, if I look at your life, you Sodom and Gomorrah here right now. You may not be in a same-sex relationship, but the other foolishness you're doing is just as bad. Amen. I'm believing in a minute. So why hasn't God rained fire and brimstone on you? Because every time God gets ready to judge you, every time God gets ready to destroy you, every time God in his holiness demands that you stand up and that you pay for what you've done, he looks for the righteous. And he looks at Jesus Christ, who is our righteousness. I ain't going to get no help in here, but I'm going to preach it anyhow. Every time he looks at Jesus, he sees the righteous, and he does not judge you. Every time you mess up, he looks at the righteous, and he does not judge you. Every time you fall again, he looks at the righteous, and he does not judge you. That's why you got to open your mouth and declare, despite what you've done, despite what mess your life is in, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am seated with him in heavenly places. I am an heir of God because of what Jesus has done. I am a son of God. So even though I may have messed up, even though I may have tripped up, I thank God because it only takes less than half of a split second for me to get back where I was. If I fall, stand up in his righteousness, and there is no judgment now, never, ever, ever again. God will never, ever, ever be angry with you nor mad with you because he keeps looking at the righteous. So we go to God and we forget that we are righteous. 
I know y'all haven't read it. Psalm 103 says, as far as the heavens are from the earth, so great is his mercy. Yeah. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Well, if his mercy is that great, then why, why is it you think that he keeps punishing you? Why is it you think he keeps hating you? His mercy is as, for us, yes. equals the distance between the heaven and the earth. Amen. Now, I was in a plane, and we were flying at 30,000 feet or whatever, and it was still heaven above us. Amen. I couldn't see the ground. Mm -hmm. We were above the clouds, and there was still heaven Amen. above us. Yeah. So at what point, please let me know, at what point did you use up all that mercy? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. It ain't happening. So if God loved you when you got a new car and got a new house and got a scholarship or you got new clothes, if God was loving you then, when you mess up, he's loving you then. Amen. Thank you. Because as far as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy yes. toward them that fear him. Amen. And, and then, and then, here's the thing that makes me rejoice. Mm -hmm. Makes me rejoice. As far as the east, yes. the east yes. I get it, Thank you, is God. from the west. Yes. So far has he removed mm -hmm. our iniquities. Yes. Amen. So when you come with your little red wagon, mm -hmm. And you're saying, look at all the stuff I've done. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I don't recognize this mm -hmm. because your stuff has been separated from you yeah. as far as the east is from the west. From the west. Amen. But your problem is, you let me sweat these little robes out, <laughs> go home tired, mm -hmm. and then you replenish that wagon mm -hmm. with foolishness you hear other people say. Hmm? Yeah. I done preached the hell up out of you. <laughs> and then you go and you get another deposit yeah. from somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know you ain't. You know you. But the Bible say. And if you're not talking to your friends on Facebook getting all that foolishness, you let your, your own mind Because you're not speaking the word in your mind. You're speaking your own mind. Yeah. Here's a phrase I do not like. Two of them. There's an expression now. Something happens. You say, oh, I'm just dead. Oh, yeah. I'm dead. Nah, nah. And I said, well, I'm not trying to die right now. I know that's right. <laughs> so even though I saw something that was totally, totally uh, incredible, it blew my mind, it was just stupid to the max. I'm not about to say I'm dead. Yeah, I know that's right. Amen. Unless I say I'm dead to sin. Amen. Because I'm not going to speak death over my, my life. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm not going to say that. And here's the second expression. Mm -hmm. And we speak and we say things that uh, create evil in our lives. It creates a void in our lives. It creates emptiness in our life. So I hate when people say, I'm dead. And I hate it. I hate it. I ugly. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Hmm. When people say that uh, God is not for me. Hmm. Hmm? I hate that. How are you going to say he ain't for me hmm. when he says he is for me? Well, God ain't going to use you if. God ain't going to love you if. No. His word says the absolute opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus says, I'm going to heal her. They're saying, Jesus, don't worry about it. Mm. They went to stop Jesus from completing his mission. Mm. And some of you do that all the time. The time. Yeah. You stop him. From completing his mission. Here's what you do. But I'm, I'm just proud. I don't really like people helping me. I don't like to ask for help. Amen. You're stopping him from completing his mission. Amen. The book says if you give, Amen. 
it shall be given to you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give. If you give, men will give to you. So if you give and somebody comes to give to you, you're saying, no, the word is a lie. Or I don't, I don't receive that from the word. So I'm not going to ask anybody for help. So you go hungry. You're mad with God because you're hungry. But he sent grocery. You wouldn't accept it. Somebody comes along to bless you to give you something. Oh, well, I, I just, I'm just, I don't like to take. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Because you're trying to stop him from blessing. You're talking him out of blessing you. Because you have exalted yourself. Understand this. God, your father, receives great joy when you receive from him. I don't know who people are talking about. Why are you going to serve? How are you going to serve somebody who all they want you to do is to praise them and give to them and they judge you and if you don't praise them, they get mad with you. I don't know who they're talking about. I don't know who they're talking about. Because if I cease to praise him, you know, rocks are available. They'll cry out. If nobody ever prays, God, if you never heard a praise the rest of your life, the birds do it every day. Every day. And guess what? If you don't hear praise for the next seven days, that means that you are alive to not hear it, which means that God's not mad with you because you're still living. There's nothing you're ever going to do that's going to make God angry with you because of the righteous. He remembers our frame that we are dust. Some of us. So he doesn't deal with us on the level at which Amen. we deserve. Amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Amen. I say this. I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, let me try to let me read my train of thought. That's all right. Mm -hmm. When you see things in the news like people committing nonviolent crimes and getting life in prison, wow. the punishment does not fit the crime. When you see young men rape women that are drugged and leave them behind a dumpster and they get six months of probation, oh, yeah. the crime or the punishment doesn't fit the crime. Yeah. See? Uneven, unequal. But when it comes to our Father, when it comes to God, when He judges us, He does not deal with us based on the level of the crime. Committed. Thank you. So he extends to us mercy. Mm -hmm. And he says this, and I'm and I'm by no means making light of sin. He says to us, you'll do better next time. Mm -hmm. While you sitting around grieving over something you did six months ago, the father is saying, hey, you're gonna be all right mm -hmm. because you're in me. And so I needed you to get up and to move on six months ago. Amen. And some people would carry something for 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah. And you keep telling the Father, and the Father says, East, West, East, West, East, West. Where are my iniquities? Where are my sins, God? He says, East, West. That means I don't know because I've removed them. Amen. One place he says, I threw them behind my back. And he chooses not to remember them because whenever, if God were to remember one thing you did, you would have to be destroyed because of his holiness. But he never, ever, ever, ever looks at you. He only looks at the righteous. Amen. And if he can find the righteous, you will be spared. Aren't you glad? Yeah. Hmm? So think about the worst sinner you know. Thank you, Lord. That would be you. Mm -hmm. uh, and realize that God has never looked at you 
never look at your sin, never to judge you. He's only looked at Jesus. And because Jesus is righteous, then you're righteous. And you're okay. Oh, but but I still do this and I still do that. He's going to help you work it out. That's why the Holy Ghost, when you receive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost helps you to work it out. And if you're not listening to the Holy Ghost, he'll put some other people in your ear yes. that'll help you yes. work yeah. it out. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, God. And if you're listening to nobody, mm. somebody is praying for you yes. that you can work it out. Thank you, God. And you may never get it right mm -hmm. in your flesh, but you're right in your spirit. Yes. And the more you yield to your spirit, guess what? Some stuff you're just not going to want. Amen. I love Three Musketeers bars. I would just buy them and put them on my dress and it would sit there three, four, five weeks. I just bought it because I wanted it and I'm just in anticipation. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it because I love it. I love it. I love it. And then when I finally open it to eat it, I'm waiting for this experience that Three Musketeers gives to me. <laughs> and it's just my moment. That's my moment. Some of y'all smoke weed, but I do three musketeers. Huh? All right. <laughs> Don't judge me. Right. <laughs> but they changed the combination. They saving money. Mm -hmm. Charging you more and changing the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they don't taste as good anymore to me. So guess what? I still want three musketeers bar. But every time I walk by and I realize the taste has changed, right. I, I leave it alone. Yeah. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. There's some things in your life the Lord is changing the taste of them. You know yeah. And you're going to walk by and still Thank want it. You, but you're going to say, nah, the taste has changed. Yeah. It's not a temptation anymore because it don't taste the same Thank to you, me. Yeah. Oh, I'm preaching right there, but Thank I'm going to leave it alone. Did y'all understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Don't talk God out of blessing. Stop giving him a reason why he shouldn't bless you. Why are you, why are you bothering the master? Why trouble the master any further? The child is dead. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm going to heal her. Here's a reason, Jesus, you don't have to fulfill that promise. She's dead. You're saying, Father, I want to be saved, but you ain't got to save me because I'm just really, really bad. Lord, I want to be changed, but you ain't got to change me because I'm really, really bad. Lord, I, I, I need new direction in my life, but you don't have to give it to me because I'm just really, really bad. Hmm? She's dead. Don't go, Jesus. That's what they were saying. Jesus said, and he looked at the person who was involved. He said, you just have faith. Yes. You keep the faith. No matter what you see or what you hear, you keep the faith, and I will fulfill my side. Of the bargain. Anybody with me? Amen. Amen. I'm speaking. And here's something. This is where I was going. I'm sorry. I hate when people say, I'm speaking my truth. <laughs> no such thing as my truth. There's only one truth. Amen. That's this truth. Amen. I hate Amen. that. <laughs> because now you're elevating yourself, exalting yourself wow. to a place. Where you're saying, what other people say doesn't matter. What other people do doesn't matter. And it's going to evolve into what I do does not matter because it is my truth. You see the danger there? Yes. 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 This is my truth. So once you get settled in your truth, then you don't, you don't have to receive anything else. I don't like that. That's dangerous. And I'm speaking to people who are people of faith and have an anointing to speak those things that do not right. as though they were. Amen. So you got to choose your words carefully. Mm -hmm. yes. can, can, can we agree yes. that we will no longer talk God out of blessing us? Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you, God. Yes. If her being dead didn't stop Jesus, mm -hmm. that woman you slapped yesterday, that's not going to stop Jesus from blessing you. 
for the stuff you put on Facebook. Yeah, that was me, Pastor. I snapped. <laughs> The stuff on Facebook is not going to stop him from blessing you. Yes. Amen. Your past is not going to stop him from blessing you. And I give permission now to everybody who wants the job. I now give you authority to be in charge of my past. I want you to keep thinking about what I did, what they said, where I was, any pictures you have, videotape, MP3, MP4, you are now in charge of my past. Amen. Mm -hmm. Knock yourself out. Because while you're wasting time on what I used to be, Amen. I'm going to live in what God has for Amen. me to be. Yeah. So tell your haters, y'all go ahead, stay in my past. Because I'm going to live in the blessing Amen. of right now. Amen. And those people that are in charge of your past, that's really, they categorizing stuff and polishing it up and putting it on the shelf. Guess what? They are not your friends. Cut them off now. Right now. Huh? Amen. So you can get some people that's looking. That's right. Like minded folks. That's right. Hmm? Anybody, got a view, anybody got a rear view mirror? Huh? I don't have one. Mm. All I got is eyes that see forward. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm sorry. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you. Help us, teach us, lead us yes, so that we will not talk you out of blessing us. Thank you, God. Yes, yes. We don't want to talk ourselves out of a blessing, no, Lord. but we want to trust you. Yes. You simply said our faith will do the job. Amen. So now by faith, we speak life over us. Yes. We speak healing. We speak yes, prosperity. Yes. We speak wealth. We speak everything that we need yes, over us. Thank you. you will perform your word. Yes. Yes, it will not return to you void. Yes. You will cause us to be the head and not the tail. Yes, the first and not the last. Thank you. Father, you will enlarge our borders. Yes. You will show us favor in this light. Yes, Lord. Thank you. We thank you now. Thank you. And we give you praise. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Clap your hands now if you agree. Mm -hmm. There's a blessing with your name on it. Don't talk yourself out of that blessing. I don't want to get to heaven. And I see this huge place. I heard a man say on TV, they had a vision, he was in heaven, saw these huge warehouses, people's names on them, mm -hmm. and things that they did not get while they were on earth. Yeah. He saw hearts and livers and gizzards. I said, wait a minute, people don't have gizzards. <laughs> but he saw them, I wasn't there. He saw gizzards you didn't have, and I'm gonna get some this week. But I don't want to get to heaven and God says, the Father says, here's your warehouse. All of these things were yours. You just did not receive them or claim them or lay hold of them by faith. You let other people, you let other situations stop you. And I don't want that to happen in my life. So if you got a red wagon, I know some of the kids say, what's the red wagon? All right. If you got a red wagon, a member stick, if you got, a, I don't know, an Instagram with any of that foolishness, cut it loose Amen. and let it go. Because guess what? I cannot change what I did last night. I may regret it. I may feel bad. I don't want you to know about it, but I can't change it. Amen. Amen. So thank you, Father, for today. Brand new mercy. Amen. Another opportunity to get it right. I'm moving on. I do not want to be a sinner. Don't want to live in sin. But if I made some mistakes yesterday, I'm going to move on today. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Because I cannot change it. Cannot. And I will not allow you nor your mama to make me feel bad when I'm Thank in God. Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on and give now, and we're going to. Dismiss and share.
go to 